you know, I've had a, a bunch of clients say, well, why would I want to put it in a system? Because that just makes it impersonal. I'm, and I'm like, no, 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 you're miss, you're missing it, right? It, it actually, you know, yes, you if you set up your program wrong, that's what's going to happen. But if you have the right technology partner, uh, you know, kind of a, a rec, rewards and recognition partner whose technology in, enhances that connection and that authenticity, that it actually is going to make it easier for people to do and make it um, more of a real personal connection. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, welcome. Uh, let me just give a quick introduction about you. Uh, John Land, a, a partner in Mercer's uh, career practice. Uh, with a focus on rewards and recognition, John is an expert in improving the future of work of clients worldwide. John's passion for creating great employee experiences uh, drives his holistic approach to workforce and HR transformation. Uh, with a deep understanding of rewards and recognition strategies, uh, John brings valuable insights to his client engagements across industries. Welcome, John. Uh, thank you for joining me. And I'm sure this is going to be a cracker of a discussion. And, and I look forward to learning a lot from you. Well, Partha, I really appreciate you inviting me on to your to your uh, uh, conversation here today. It's always uh, it was great to meet you in person a, a little while ago, and it's always great to reconnect with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pujar. So let me let me get started with a very basic o o overview. Now. So I have been in this space for almost like more than 10 years now. And I always was thinking like, little this, why are the big HR consulting companies not in not having a rewards and recognition practice? Okay. Mm. I mean, I could see comp and benefits practice, rewards practice, you know, organizational design practice, but I could never see that's rewards and recognition practice. And I tried convincing a few people. I mean, I have not been very successful in that so far. Uh, but but when I came across uh, Mercer's uh, RNR practice, you know, I was pleasantly surprised. So it'd be good to know, like, what made you actually create a practice around this? What's the history of, of your uh, Mercer's RNR practice? Yeah, that's a really good question, right? Um, and, and, and we're a relatively new practice, right? I'd say we've had a practice uh, for uh, just going on five years now, right? Um, and it, it really generated where mo most consulting comes out of, right? We saw a client need, right? We were getting a lot of questions around recognition. Um, and, um, and and I think what what's interesting is, uh, is Mercer and our, and, and our fellow uh uh, HR consulting firms, right? We're, we're very strong, like you said, in the compensation, we're very strong in the benefits. Um, our consultants in those areas are subject matter experts in those areas, right? So they, you know, they, the, the benefits folks are like, if it's kind of tied to a health wellness, a benefit, like that's, that's my expertise. Our compensation, if it's executive, broad-based, uh, whatever, if it, again, is dealing with paycheck money, right? Yeah, right? They're like, we, this is our, this is what we do. Or, or even, you know, equity too, right? They'll, they'll get into that. But recognition kind of, uh, it doesn't kind of, it covers everything, right? It has a financial kind of cash component, potentially. It's got a well-being component of kind of really helping with mental health. It can touch on talent management, performance. So I, I think it's it's uh, for the consulting world. It's been something that no one really is like I have expertise in this, or that um, that that it's something that I want to broaden out into. Um, I think it was uh, partly due to my my particular background that I came from the corporate side, and my role as a uh, HR professional was more broad based uh, having kind of ended my corporate career as a CHRO like i immediately saw the the need for help uh, our clients needing help on designing what it, are they going to do around recognition how does that connect to the overall business strategy how does that connect to the people strategy to the talent strategy to the talent strategy right because it impacts all of those things um, uh, so we started out, you know, basically, basically with a client, a global 
uh, fintech client was like, we don't know what to do. Can you help us? And we're like, we don't know the space yet, but we have a methodology and we can help you through this. So, so uh, I definitely think that it's uh, as recognition is, is, is growing as, you know, as a, not a nice to have, but a must have for companies to compete and retain talent. Um, that it, it will see more and more people understanding that this is a uh, a marketplace that uh, that that needs consulting services. So uh, we're just happy to be first yeah. to the game, Martha. <laughs> no, I, I I totally you know agree with the points which you made, and I think it's it's particularly your background where you're coming from. I think different functions, the different uh, functional areas of HR where you're working. And that's why you see a horizontal thing, like fitting into everything, right? Well-being, performance management, you know, talent retention, all those things uh, do come into place. And and I also, uh, we also see that just like you have picked it up five years back, you know, we see demand increasing, okay? Mm -hmm. And we see the gap there where it is, we want to do something around recognition. We don't know what to do. Okay, how to go about doing these kind of things. And I think many things are falling in place. Uh, uh, the ecosystem is falling in place to that. And even when I looked at the Gartner report uh, recently around rewards and recognition, so they have some bullseye kind of a, a, a diagram where the importance of rewards and recognition is increasing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another chart, which they, I mean, it shows increasing over the last few years, because I've, I've been seeing the same chart for the last three years, and I see the circle increasing in size, the circle of the importance of, of that. Another, which is the hype cycle, which is there, right? So that's their famous hype cycle, which is there. So they're also, actually, rewards and recognition are in the, in the trough of disappointment right now, disillusionment, that's what they say. But that's where the starting of the opportunity. So right, initially, like everyone, you know, like this is something new, we should do it, we should do it, then they start doing it. Uh, it's not really performing that thing. But when it's in the in the trough of disillusionment, it starts maturing and stabilizing. Okay, that's where the, the real innovation starts coming in, the real problems getting solved, not just the, the hype uh, things which are there. Yeah. So, yeah, and I totally agree with you on, on that. But since, uh, since you were uh, like uh, you come from a CHRO background and, and, and from the corporate side of things uh, and, and in this practice itself like five years, what are you seeing in terms of what what are the changes which are happening in this whole uh, practice? You, know, you have been, you talk to a lot of different vendors, you talk to a lot of clients, what changing and and, and, yeah. and maybe other question is what do you see it going uh, on to in the next five years or so? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think we can all agree, right, that the pandemic uh, really, ex you know, threw, uh, threw gas on the fire for the need for uh, 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 formal rewards and recognition, right? I mean, rewards and recognition has been happening probably since companies started, right? Before companies started, yes. right? I mean, it's just, it's part of being a, in, in a community, right? Um, so it's been going forever, but what 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 I think is has really changed is right right the the move to remote and hybrid, right and this need to not just get people connected but create connection, right uh, create those uh, those friendships those 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 opportunities to celebrate people as people and not just as workers. Um, and I think that's just going to continue, right? I mean. Uh, Many areas around the world, right? That there's been a, a, a pretty significant shift in kind of uh, worker attitudes. To you know, this isn't just about a paycheck. This is about uh, 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 being part of and feeling like you're contributing. Um, I think that's driving into it too. I think that um, what we're seeing as well is 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 again is like the the also the technology that that's available now and that how we can more easily have technology help augment the human experience, right, um, is is driving the, the need and also the capability. So like you said, well, it's been a trough. And I think part of that is like the technology is just catching up to where it can actually augment the rewards and recognition that's happening, right, um, right. where it can help make it easier where it's not just a 
you know, I've had a, a bunch of clients say, well, why would I want to put it in a system? Because that just makes it impersonal. I'm, and I'm like, no, 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 you're miss, you're missing it, right? It, it actually, you know, yes, you if you set up your program wrong, that's what's going to happen. But if you have the right technology partner, uh, you know, kind of a, a rec, rewards and recognition partner whose technology in, enhances that connection and that authenticity, that it actually is going to make it easier for people to do and make it um, more of a real personal connection, right? Um, so, so I think that's what's happening, right? And I think some of that trough is like people are like, oh, people are just giving awards and they're saying thanks, but they don't say what it's for. So driving towards that that real authentic connection that then is also creating also that that giver benefit, right? That giving recognition is is a valued people. Like I feel good kind of recognizing you. You feel good recognizing me. I also feel good that you recognize me as well, right? So there's 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 a value in both giving and getting, which is also taking this from a top-down management exercise to really a democratized uh, uh, program, right? Where everyone can recognize everyone. No, I, I totally uh, agree with you. And I, I, I'm just making a note of three points which you uh, brought up. So one was uh, the recognition has been going on forever. Okay. Uh, every company has those salesmen of the year, employee of the week or something like that. Right? It's, it's been going on. Yeah. I sometimes tell, I mean, when I talk to our clients and prospects and industry uh, people here, I say that in your 10,000 people company, you have these 10 people whom you recognize in the year. Okay. Yeah. There are at least 10% of the people who are going beyond their job description, okay, who are doing a lot of things and which you appreciate on a regular basis, but it's not in the system anywhere and, and it just goes away. Okay. So maybe there are, in your 10,000 people company, maybe there are 1,000 people whom, who deserve some kind of recognition. Okay? smaller scale i mean I, they're not an olympic medal winner but at least the state medal winner right so yeah you need to recognize them there so this is this this systems help you in that and the second point which you talked about the technology part now i i keep on getting this yes i totally understand and i say if you can actually appreciate people or in a physical way as in like face to face nothing like that okay but you can't okay you can't and now with the remote working, you can't more. I mean, you can't do that at all. So technology helps you. Just like AI is right now helping us. I mean, hopefully it will not take over from us, but at least helping us enhance whatever we are doing. So in the same way, technology is supposed to enhance it. it it's not going to replace it. And we have taken into consideration, right? I mean, as a physical meeting is always better. But it just is me. I, I can do much more meetings, video meetings, right? So it just enhances this thing. And and, and it third point you talked about, and I think it ties up with the question about the future uh, there, is on the ecosystem and technology is coming into play now. Okay, uh, I take Microsoft Teams, AI, uh, even mobile apps, right? I mean, those are all helping in. I mean, it's, it's easy to not connect all the dots together. Okay, and it, it's going to enhance for sure uh, is, is how I... How I think about this. I yeah. I also go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I just, just yeah, I, I was I was gonna say I yeah, I totally agree with you on all those points. I think uh, and I think the other thing that's you said what's going on in the future is like you know in the past right we we've, we've been doing this recognition very you know a very small number of people, um, usually not very uh, diverse. Right. So, um, uh, you know, so it's it's kind of um, kept social structure. Right. Um, uh, but not good social structure. Right. It's, it's it hasn't, uh, again, been uh, kind of freed uh, the real potential of all people, um, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, I, I also see, you know, the re rewards and recognition really helping out with that. Right. Because. The other thing we didn't have is, it's like you said, it wasn't in the system. We had no data, no visibility, you know, other than 
what might be captured in per a performance review, right? Uh, what might be captured in, you know, in other data and like you, you call that specific like sales, like we've captured all the sales information ever, right? But we right. don't capture all those individual points of thank yous and appreciation and gratitude that do happen on a daily basis. Now we have a way of harnessing and gathering that information where we can actually see um, all the people that are getting recognized, right? And we can can give them uh, the uh, the recognition or the re reward that that they're due. We can also then also help people. Um, I, I like to pick on me, right? I'm the quintessential white male, right? So like, um, right, I'm always getting recognized kind of thing, right? In, 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 especially in the US culture. Um, but also maybe I'm getting recognized and other people aren't because they aren't in the same uh, demographic as me. Well, we didn't have the availability to do that. So my manager tends to lean in and recognize me versus other people on my team. Now we can bring back and we'll just say he's a white male too. We can bring back to Steve, like, hey, Steve, like, look at this, right? You know, just, just wanted to kind of make you aware of this. And I don't think Steve, I think it's unconscious bias that we we have an opportunity to address, right? Uh, and even conscious bias, right? But, uh, but at least we have a way to talk to people about it now to start educating them and, uh, and helping them really kind of uh, break some of those uh, poor habits, let me say, or, 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 or negative biases. Um, so I, I really do, I, I'm really uh, bullish on that being a way to help uh, leadership, people leaders be better at leading all people. Um, and, uh, um, and, and also, uh, well, I'll just end it there. I think that that to me is uh, the, the data, the richness of the data for R&R is just Un, yet to be tapped to its fullest extent, I think. I couldn't agree with you more uh, on that. You know, the, the amount of data that can be captured uh, in this, and, and, and you're talking about social structures, I mean, uh, extending into DEI things which yeah. are there, you know, these, these tools and platforms are only going to get better, okay? And they will be able to capture much more information and also synthesize this information with other information systems, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I think performance management is the first one, right? It is, is something where if all the information feeds it, okay, to the performance management system, the, the person who's, who's reviewing you, who's doing your performance management has so much data, right? So I, I see this as a three concentric circles. Uh, yeah, maybe concentric circles. So I, I say the first one is they are, when you do performance management, your reporting manager has a lot of data on your performance, okay? People outside of the reporting manager might not know about your performance per se, but they will know about your, a slightly bigger circle knows about your uh, uh, capabilities and skills and all, right? Oh, John is a great, you know, he's very analytical, okay? John is a great uh, team player, okay? So they know certain information. They will not know exactly how John performed, right? But they know these skills are there. That skills, uh, competences is how I am. I think about it, you know, a slightly wider circle, which comes in from the r, &R platform and a slightly even bigger circle knows about the values which you have, mm -hmm. okay? They, they don't know about whether you're analytical or not, but I know John is very, you know, uh, em empathetic when people talk to him. John is, shows the value of uh, creativity, you know, value of discipline, all, all those things. I think these data can really feed into the performance management system as, as one step. I also see, just to extend that, I also see for companies to drive certain behaviors, right? I mean, if we're children, you know, I have two kids, you know, so I, I tell the younger one or elder one that, you know, a good job done, here's a cookie for you or a chocolate for you. It reinforces, it reinforces that behavior and my other, uh, my other kid will be like, okay, if he does this, he gets this. Okay. It may not be a monetary value. It's just that he's getting appreciated. The yeah. behavior is reinforced. Okay. They also take, take that same behavior that this is what. 
or the other way if i give a stick also they understand uh, the other side what will happen uh, if they don't do that but i think this reinforcement of the platform like this is very important to reinforce uh, those behaviors and values which the company focuses on yeah yeah so uh, as i said like i i think there's so much to discuss here but uh, 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 but keeping in mind the time limits so uh, let me just uh, focus on on certain uh, things uh, so in in uh, so you have been helping companies uh, in uh, designing their rnr programs right mm-hmm. so where do you start off with them okay so do you start with an audit of the process or what do you do or there are two kinds of companies companies which already have a platform companies which yeah. don't use any rnr platforms or systems there how do you go about this where is the starting point for them yeah I, whether they have a platform or not right where where we start is we do start with an audit what are you doing today right um uh, with those with a platform it's 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 uh relatively easy right because they're they they are capturing a lot of it. We still will kind of see find out what's being done outside the system because there there still are kind of uh in uh uh in companies like that even that have a platform sometimes you'll find uh another kind of R&R program that's uh that has existed beforehand that's continued on or that uh, the a local uh a, a specific location said hey we don't we're not getting what exactly what we need and instead of kind of going through the process of of including it in the rnr platform they just go outside right so we try and find those out right uh uh for those that don't have um uh a a platform already that it gets it's a little bit more wild wild west i was just working with a uh uh an organization that has around 60,000 people in 60 countries and we cataloged over 300 R and R programs across this conference. Oh, right. Wow. It was like, yeah, you know, but then th- then we say, well, they they all kind of fit some sort of bucket, right? Like what's going on and we're able to say that cuz one is you you want to build from where you are. So you kind of have to understand where you are. Could you skip that part? You could. I think the 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 challenge with doing that is that you could take something away without knowing it. and cause disruption right um that said what we do once we catalog it's more of like okay before we start saying what we're going to do for uh rnr let's first go back to what are you trying to achieve right what are you trying to achieve so what does the future look like you know the results like what are you trying are you trying to drive corporate behaviors are you trying to drive uh 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 higher engagement are you trying to drive um more productivity like and it could be all of those right cuz like we want all of them well okay well what does that mean to you how do you measure that today how could you measure it what's what's the the then now let's think about okay if these are the things you're trying to do what then are the methods right what are the methods the types of recognition is it peer to peer is it uh social is it uh um uh monetary um like all these different all the different avenues is it even recognizing things outside of work right such as just life events to create connect you know, what is it that's going to tie back uh in your rewards and recognition program that's going to align to your R&R strategy which again is aligned all the way up right and and we say have that in place um and then kind of discuss and talk with you know, the potential partners right uh if you have an existing partner go to that existing partner and say hey we're even if we had a program we think we're we're changing our strategy we need to move in uh, uh we need to add these additional things or revamp these things let's partner together and move that uh, move that forward um uh if you don't have a platform um already like get one right I, i think the one thing i do talk to some organizations that are like we want to do this by ourselves in house and i'm like that is doable right but it, it it's 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 it sounds a little bit like a sisyphean task right are you going to set up your own merchandising are you going to you know uh, build your own technology like it's just like you're 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 
you know, your investment in doing that without somebody who uh, a, a vendor partner that specializes in this is uh, 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 it's close to the definition to of insanity in my book. <laughs> so, so again, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I, I, I totally and I, and, I, and I hear this a lot. You know, hey, we can. This is just a workflow uh, tool. Eh? We can create it. We have like five engineers on the bench. You know, they'll just create something. Yeah, you can create, but what's the cost uh, to that? And can you keep up with the innovations which is happening? Because I feel it's a lot of innovations are happening in this space by different yeah. vendors. I also sometimes, you know, blame us, the vendors, who have been focusing too much on the rewards part of it. You know, I, uh, you know, in the U.S. particularly, I saw the focus is so much on the catalog. It's it's like insane uh, the amount of focus. And the RFP questions are around you know, delivery of goods, 24-7 customer support that, you know, it's going to take time uh, there. But I think even the larger players, I see them moving into the recognition uh, part, okay, because the catalog is becoming a slightly commodity uh, there. And, and 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 the recognition is where the difference is coming in. And, and I see that focus, and at least that's a, a good thing. I just when you were talking about you know seeing what they have in the in the system right now and then you recommending them, just a one uh, anecdote uh, which I got was we were talking about how Vantis not sorry not Vantis so how the rewards and recognition uh, data can feed into the performance management. Now there is, is one company who was talking to us about ESG driving ESG behavior. So like okay, uh, what? How do you want to do that? And you talked about outside the office also, right? So these guys have something like a carbon footprint of John, okay? Because how many flights you have booked up, how many meetings you have done? So John's carbon footprint was this. I said like, what do you do with the data? Uh, nothing. If they go onto the travel portal, they will see that carbon footprint, okay? Do you reinforce it? Do you encourage it? Otherwise, it's just a number there. Okay. Do you give them a comparison that John's peer? And John might say, I, I am the practice head, so I will have to travel more anyway. So you can't compare my carbon footprint with Partha's footprint, right? But yeah. what are John's peers doing? Okay, what are their carbon footprints which are there? So maybe through this system, you know, recognizing the ESG behavior of John can actually uh, help John realize that okay. I need to look into this uh, thing. So yeah, yeah I, 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 I agree with you know what how you go about this process, you not know, thinking about what they have and then recommending that. Yeah. Any, I mean, I know it's a slightly technical question, but yeah. uh, any any tips on like how they should companies should start? I mean, one is of course you talked about how they should evaluate your systems there. You know, uh, what are the common like? pitfalls you have seen in companies you know, one is of course you told yeah. about uh, trying to do it on their own but besides that what yeah. have you seen in your... I, I think the common pitfalls uh, that I've seen is is, is uh, and, and one thing I, I I just realized I forgot to mention is you know listen to your employees right a lot of companies you know do employee listening and they do it well uh, they're not yet asking about that. They might just ask one or two things like, do you feel recognized? Right. You need to dig further into that. And, and what does recognition and rewards mean to, to, to the employees? Because right. Uh, especially in, well, even in, in a, co a company in, in one location, that's going to mean different things to different people. Right. Just like if you say, what's the definition of good to somebody, right. You ask five people that five people are going to give you five different answers. So you, you really need to listen to your listen to your employees and understand, you know, what is it that they want and value in the uh, from from R and R, right? And I think that's a common pitfall. I think uh, again, I think some companies have take this uh, uh, unfortunate attitude is like, well, we don't want to ask because then if they tell us, we might have to do something, right? I'm like, well. <laughs> okay, well, then you know, you're already starting off on the back foot, right? Like, because you're, you, you know, you're, you're definitely that, you know, setting kind of that tone and culture from the top is, is definitely going to have ramifications uh, on, on how you perform as an organization, 
right? But but the a pitfall I see is 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 not listening to employees, right? Not even basic listening, right? And just and just asking, what is everyone else doing? What everyone else mm-hmm. doing is helpful, right? Like benchmarking is helpful for just to for understanding. But it's not like if you're following benchmark, benchmark is not leading practice and it may not be the right practice for you. Right. So so I think, you know, again, digging deeper at the beginning to understand where you are and what your let's call employees customers in this case and all levels. I'm talking senior leadership on down to yeah. individual contributor. Right. The customers of R&R. You need to listen to their voice. You need to solve for their problem, right? right. Um, the other thing that I see happening is a, a kind of pitfall is this idea of race. We're gonna we're gonna design the program, we're gonna implement a program, and then we're gonna set it on autopilot. All right, you're, you're done, right? It's it's like you just invested a lot of time and money for a program that is eventually gonna die on the vine, right? Just like anything, right? It requires care and feeding. And um, uh, 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 a lot of my um, uh, former colleagues in the, uh, I think in the, the chief people officer rank, you know, they, they're like, okay, we got it set up and then they're moving on to the next thing. But they're not then mm-hmm. like kind of, they, they hand it off and even the head of total rewards or head of talent management hands it off to uh, more of a day-to-day program manager. And then it, that person mm-hmm. usually has several other programs, right? So they're not resourcing it adequately internally to really continue to say, how's the business evolving? What are things changing? How does the program need to change? Also, are they actually looking at the data and leveraging that to continue to drive their understanding of their workforce and make uh, you know micro adjustments along the way to, to, to continue to have the program be a value and be effective in driving the results they want? So that's another huge thing uh, is, is kind of this uh, set it and forget it attitude that that we see. Uh, another real uh, pitfall that I see is, I, I think you hit on something really important, Partha, is that it, it uh, there, there, this is a growing marketplace, right? Uh, I think a lot of the, not the breakout companies, right, that in this space, but are so focused on the reward side of it, that that's all people are thinking of. They're not seeing the value and everything else. And then they're selecting a a fulfillment company to help them run yeah. their rewards and recognition versus a rewards and, and more of that recognition, right? That, again, I, if I were to put it, I put little R, little N, big R, <laughs> right? Yes. Rewards I wish. Yes. Recognition. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, no, I, uh, so, so I think it's a good idea. Like, I, I, should, I, I should tell my marketing guys to put that uh, that uh, R and capital R on uh, that side. <laughs> no, I, I I was yeah. smiling when you were talking about particularly the program management part, right? The whole, yeah. uh, I mean, you say it's it's not just a platform which you just put in and it works. Okay, it might work for many systems of records. You know, you have a timesheet management system. You put it there, people will anyway have to fill up. So they fill up, even with the worst of user experience, right? So you don't have to worry about adoption or anything there. Uh, but r and particularly because it's not a very well understood or, a, or or relatively new in terms of people. I mean, the corporate HRs don't have the experience or the expertise, okay? Because it is just mm-hmm. relatively new uh, field, and that's why you, you guys just started it. The whole program management, where you talked about two three things about, you know, actually evaluating the program on a continuous basis. Okay, what tweaks can be made? Mm-hmm. What are the best practices? I mean, there have there are like a few thousand companies which are doing great in this. What are they doing on, on that? Okay, you don't have that expertise and experience in-house. Okay, the whole program management is very, very key. Features will come and go. I mean, I'll add some feature, my computer will add another feature. Those things will keep on happening forever. Okay, but the whole program management, I I. I also seriously think, uh, you know, uh, where, uh, uh, you know, it's very, very important. And, and we feel that it's one of the pillars where we have to focus on on doing that. In, in the pitfalls thing, you know, I also sometimes think it's a lot of paralysis by analysis happens here. 
okay what uh, is uh, okay what if someone games the system all right uh, all those kind because first is that people will game because if your focus is too much on the rewards there's a monetary thing okay there's a more incentive to game the system uh, there uh, but i always tell uh, it's uh, just forget about all the data okay just say any person who doesn't like to be recognized you show me one i'll stop my business you know i'll i'll close my company everyone <laughs> likes recognition right everyone likes recognition yeah. so whatever you do will only improve from the base situation now okay and then we can keep on tweaking it and keep on improving improving this part the other is the very high focus and that's my actual next question to you is, is the focus on oh, what's the roi okay yeah. on, on having a platform like this yeah i have some answers and i'll add to what you say uh, there but i'd love to hear like what's your answer to that yeah i think the the roi is 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 amazing on this right i mean you can actually uh you know again you 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 are getting you and when i say you i'm talking about companies right they, they are getting roi from uh rnr today even without a system right maybe it's only tiny right maybe it's only tiny because no one knows what you have the opportunity here is to actually for the first time measure roi because you're you're getting data from the system that you can actually measure and tie back with other business results to actually calculate roi right um like i like to say organizations that don't have a platform what a, a modern recognition program let's call it a more modern rnr program um um uh, R and R is happening on the back of expense reports. You have no idea what you're spending. You have no idea if you're generating any ROI out of that. You're you are just blind, right? Modern uh, R and R gives you the ability to actually calculate it, and 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 I think it's 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 multifaceted. And a lot of times, I think a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's retention." Yeah, that's one basic thing, right? Um, I think it's well being. Right, there's a huge tie to it. I, I haven't seen anybody do this yet, but I, I think eventually you'll actually even be able to calculate kind of uh, for those companies that can get access to their uh, to their um, health insurance claims and stuff like that. They, you know, if they if yeah. that they might be able to tie that back and say like, okay, like we'll be able to kind of correlate and say people that are receiving X number of uh, uh, recognition. Right, we see kind of you know there's multiple factors, but I think that's one way to to think about it. I think the other is again just the the enga engagement and the the networks that people will have within their organizations, measuring the value of networks and connection. Right, there's a ton of value in that. Right, that where you're kind of having different parts of the organization really working and connecting and uh, and I think is another big thing. And, and this is kind of a big bet immerser, right? Like. Like we think that the the job market's going to move from, or the the market's going to move from jobs to skills, right? I think there's a huge yeah. ROI in uh, in leveraging uh, R and R to really understand. You know, you can infer skills, you can get kind of peer reviewed skills, um, all those things. Because I, you know, the one thing I like to say, Partha, is like right now, I think the the most companies the best way you can get like you, like what are people's skills go look at their LinkedIn. i'm oh, sorry I, I i just went uh blank for a second but go look at their go look at their linkedin profile and people kind of are saying well they, they're good at this they're good at that i even go to my own and say i've got people who have ranked uh, rated me on talent management who i've never worked on right so how good yeah. is that data <laughs> right but it, yeah. we lean on that or we lean on the individual john tell me what you're good at right Right. right, like I might say I'm really good at empathy, and and they're not that good, you know. It's you know, so so I I think there's a ton of ROI, not in just results, but in the actionable information that you're going to get from these programs. I I you know I I was smiling because you know I have been discussing about this internally with our product team also. But there's so much information you can gather, and exactly the LinkedIn example I gave. People who endorsed you for skills, they 
around 95% of them don't even know me that well to endorse that I am a good leader. I mean, how? You don't even, haven't even seen me, my leadership team. Who's going to be able to give my, my team will be able to tell me whether I am a good leader or not. Okay. Yeah. I think that is where we, we, we are trying to create the system through which, you know, the skills can be captured. You are getting endorsed or let's say in the RNR terminology, you are getting recognized for those skills. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a strong ROI. The retention ROI, uh, you know, we we'll, we might have differing views there because I always say that retention is very very multi variable. It is very difficult to do it. It's the easiest thing to do, okay? Because you can just find John got ten recognitions, Partha got five recognitions. So John left this year. I Partha uh, left within two months, right? It might be very easy, but something which is easy to measure doesn't mean that it is the right thing to measure. Okay, so uh, I think mm-hmm. we are focusing too much on the retention. And I, I maybe I, I when we met, I gave you this example. I, as long as we are married, be in love. Okay, you might separate. Yeah. That's okay. Your life goals changes. You know, your situation changes. You might separate. But as long as we are married. Be in love. So as long as you're in the company, you want them to be engaged. You don't expect today's world that people will be working for 30 years with you. Okay. Yeah. But in those five years they work with you, if they're really engaged and how will they be engaged? They recognize and of course the hygiene factors, all those things are there, a good boss and all. That's where you'll get the get the results. I, I uh, you know, I, I, totally I was just thinking, okay, the skills thing is something which, and I'm pretty sure most vendors are, are looking in that uh, space. Uh, let me take like a last uh, one, one or two questions uh, on that. So uh, you have been working with a lot of the CHRO or the CXO level people there. Uh, we still haven't seen a lot of focus from the, it is not the CHRO metric. Okay. Mm-hmm. They don't care what's going on on that. It is someone's operational role uh, there. Do you see any change happening there? Are CHROs or CXOs talking about uh, recognition or, or do you think it's, it's a few years away? I, I think it's starting to become more and more part of the conversation, which I think, you know, um, I think there there are some leading CHROs, right, who are kind of uh, seeing the value in this and kind of, bringing it to the the attention of the other CXOs, right? Um, I do think that there's, you know, and I, and I, I do think as, you know, the CHRO role really changes, really morphs into that chief people officer, the CPO, kind of like from old to new, that we're going to see more and more of that coming in because it's, it's more and more about, you know, how are really understanding, you know, how are we going to, continue to create this human centric productivity, right? Um, CEOs are get interested in this, I think, as well, um, when their CPOs bring it to them, because that, then they're, you know, the, 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 the CEOs want to know this type of information, right? Like this is invaluable when, a, when, a, when, when, when whoever owns the program, and again, a lot of times these, this, as of right now, it's owned by by HR, right? Um, not, not in all companies, right? It, you know, sometimes you see it starting in different different businesses under different. Uh, um, with the, the 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 move to skills, I think this is becoming more and more of interest to the CXOs, the CEOs the CIOs, all those, as they say, how can I really unlock the potential of my organization, you know, with this new mind shift? And then there are, they're then reaching back to the CPO and saying, how do we do this? How do I understand this? Um, so I think the avenue will continue to go through the CPO, at least for the, the near term, but it is on mm-hmm. top of mind of the rest of the, the CXO suite, especially as they start to think uh, and understand that, uh, talent is an enterprise resource, not a department resource, right? And what I mean by that is a lot of times today is like some place like this is my group, this is my division, right? Well, maybe you don't have the skills you need there and you start to understand the skill is over here in, 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 in Partha's organization, not mine. And, uh, you know, so, so now it's like, okay, I, this is, 
these are the set of people that I have working on certain initiatives I have, but these people belong to the organization, right? And we're going to leverage their skill as best possible. Then these R and R again, the getting that information and being able to look across the organization is just going to become even more powerful and that they're going to need a tool to, to really help them uh, do R and R better to uh, gain the, 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 the ROI out of it and, and really drive the, run their business in a completely different way than it is today. I mean, there'll always be jobs. I think, I think we're going to move more to flexible, flexible and gig jobs or, or roles. Uh, but there will always be some jobs that are fixed, right? Um, um, so that's a that's that's a long way around to saying I think the C-suite is definitely much more getting uh, clued into uh, R and R and and wanting to see R and R, which is why we're seeing such a uh, uh, an exponential ask uh, and growth in this marketplace. And, and and that's why you have started a practice. Yeah, so because you see this, the CXOs coming to you. So that's why uh, I think the validation of uh, you also starting is that. Just to add on to this thing, so and a slight uh, dichotomy which I see uh, in, 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 in CXOs. So if I look at culture is one of the top three priorities of almost all the CXOs, almost all companies year after year after year, okay? Culture is one of our top priorities. What drives culture? It's behaviors and values in the company. What are the systems for you to drive it? As of now, it's putting up a poster in the in the meeting room. It is sending out a communication emails there. But but there, what are the systems available to you to drive these? And I believe, you know, lots of HR systems are systems of records. Okay. They are not to drive behavior and, and, and certain things. And there might be a few tools, okay, like a feedback tools are there, all those things are there. But r and can play a very important role in driving this behavior and values leading to the culture thing which you're talking about. And culture is, of course, is the productivity and, and business results which is there. You know? That's what we are looking at and, and that's what I hope, uh, 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 you know, the world moves to. Final, uh, 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 final question for you. Uh, you've touched upon it, uh, but... How exactly does uh, Mercer help uh, companies in this? I mean, right from the design execution, what stage do you come in? Where do you help uh, companies? Yeah, you know, it's uh, um, ideally we're coming in uh, uh, as they're thinking about what is our strategy, right? Um, uh, uh, even what's our philosophy, like you know, because it all builds off of there. Um, that said, every company is at a, a different point in their journey, and we can kind of uh, support. Um, we can support people where they are, right? Um, we can come in and right at the beginning and help the, the, the strategy, design the program, help them operationalize it, uh, help them activate it. Uh, because again, like that set and forget, uh, and we can help them kind of sustain it, right? So there's, there, there's the whole kind of loop that we can help them with, um, where, mm -hmm where we can't really help, and maybe this is the question, is like, if, if this really isn't something that, that that you think is gonna be a value, just, you're just trying to check a box, right? Because someone tells you to do it, not Mercer, not you know Vantage Circle, nobody, right? You're, you're gonna set yourself up. So I think that the one thing is, is it, uh, that I try and even kind of, when people are like, well, I'm just being told I need to, improve our milestone program, right? Our service awards. I'm like, well, then, you know, you're, you're just go ahead and find, find you know, a, 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 a reward company, right? Because you're not really trying to get to recognition. You're just trying to do something. Somebody's telling you to do something. You're just kind of trying to go check a box. Um, that's, uh, Frankly, th those kind of companies, I, don't, I, I think they're in a spot where they're they're not they're not ready for help. <laughs> um, so I hope that answers the question. It's like it, wherever yes. you need it, we can come in and help you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Don. I think that covers what you provide. You know, in a right from the ideation stage to the execution and 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 and, and the measurement, and the tweaking part of it, which is required. I think uh, and. With, with Mercer's expertise uh, in, in, in the entire spectrum of HR uh, services, 
I'm pretty sure this will be very exciting. And I hope other consulting companies also come into this place, uh, you know, start building up their practices on that. Thank you, John. Thanks a lot for, you know, be joining us in this call and a uh, lot of interesting discussions. I have so many other things to talk about, but I'll stop there. So, yeah.